This is episode 32 of the Effective Executive Podcast and uh, YouTube channel. And this week I wanted to cover failing before you start. And this has got to be one of the worst things that can happen to any executive. You know, going down the wrong path, a, a project that doesn't make any sense, a strategy that doesn't make any sense. And, um, you know, you get in too deep and then you've got to just kind of cover for it <laughs> in order for it to work because, you know, you don't want to be looked upon poorly and you're in a position as an executive to be able to, you know, cover it up, <laughs> put the, put the body away and, you know, put the dirt on it and, and, and bury it. Um, but you know, you get in too deep and then it's too late and, and you know, money's wasted and things of that sort. But so there's a, uh, there's some good news associated with this. And the good news is that you took action. It, it is what I referenced back in uh, episode three when I spoke about errors of commission and errors of omission. And uh, errors of commission, of commission is doing something that shouldn't have been done. And uh, I don't find that to be the biggest problem, as I mentioned in, in episode three, uh, the biggest problem is an error of omission, and that's not doing something that should have been done. Um, and, uh, you know, being too risk averse for the good of the company, and especially in this day and age uh, where disruption is going on constantly with innovation and things of that sort. So, uh, but, but the willingness to take action really is, is not enough. And, uh, you know, my problem has always been, at, whether as an executive or with a consultant, it has been uh, errors of commission, which is do, again doing something that shouldn't have been done. So I've always, I've always been very, uh, I haven't been very risk averse uh, in my career. I've always kind of taken the um, the risky choice, so to speak. So it's one of the reasons why I developed this method is want to kind of de-risk the decisions that we're making. And I believe that you do this um, through uh, develop, developing first your synthetic thinking skills, uh, your ability to look at the whole. And, um, you know, I've talked about this quite a bit, and there's obviously in the playlist uh, on my YouTube channel, um, one that says start here, uh, you must develop these synthetic thinking skills because you can't build the whole by virtue of your analytical thinking, the ability to break things apart. And so developing these synthetic thinking skills will help you uh, understand the, you know, what the purpose is of your organization. You know, it'll help you develop that uh, aim and purpose, which you can't, I just, I've never seen it successfully done from an analytic standpoint. That's why you have to develop these synthetic thinking skills. Um, but once you've identified the purpose of your organization, this in turn uh, helps you identify the priorities of things that you should be working on. Now, I, again, I take the approach of looking through a customer lens and looking through a thinking lens and then identifying some of the mismatches of things that, you know, when I look through through a customer lens of what the customer sees when they look at our organization or your organization, then they're going to, you're going to start to identify some things that say, boy, there's some disconnects there with our customer. And why did that happen? Well, we think this way, and this is the way we built our system uh, as a whole. And uh, here's the barriers that we've put up in front of our customers. So de developing, if you're going to avoid failing, which you're not, uh, completely, then you need to identify what those priorities are from um, the purpose or the aim of, uh, of your organization. And then you really need to build in, and I've been hitting this rather hard to probably the last few uh, episodes, is build you know, a mindset or a culture of failure. Being able to just sit there and, and know that 
you may be going down the wrong path, but before you get to step 62, you know in step two that you need to pivot or scrap the original uh, portion. And, and this is the hardest thing for organizations uh, to do. They write a strategy and boy, we're going to go to that strategy, even if it's a bad one, uh, or we're going to start that project and uh, it's, it's destined for failure, but we're going to push through. Um, and then we're going to celebrate when we finish it, even if it doesn't accomplish our, our purpose or any of the priorities that, that are uh, needed. And so this is the reason that you have to go through a process uh, as an executive to uh, develop these synthetic thinking skills, which will in turn help you uh, develop your, your aim or purpose in your organization, then identify the priorities that you need to be working on. Now, one other thing I want to throw in here, and it doesn't necessarily fit in that line, is that you also need to be proactively innovating in your organization for all the reasons I mentioned just a little bit earlier in this episode, which is you're being disrupted. Um, somebody's constantly looking at a new way to do things, and depending on the industry, you know, maybe in, a, in an HVAC industry, not so much, but it certainly would give you a huge advantage, but there are many other industries, especially for those of you that are in the tech industry, they're constantly innovating. And what was a great idea and made you a lot of money yesterday is going to be gone tomorrow. Um, it's that fast in some in industries that are being disrupt disrupted on a constant basis. And really, you know, all industries should have that mindset. There is always a better way to do something within your organization. So uh, my suggestion is, if, is to develop your synthetic thinking skills. Um, I, do, I do it using a system map because um, it gets everybody on the same page, therefore helping you identify what your aim and purpose is in your organization, set your priorities, and then um, you know, knowing that uh, you go into things with the idea that what's not working as opposed to we're going to, because it's a project now and because it's a strategy, we've got to move forward. Um, that's always a bad idea. Um, so, uh, and then developing a system to proactively innovate. That's the message I wanted to get out this week. Uh, this will help you not fail before you start or uh, give you a sense of whether you're working on the right things within your organization.